Hi. Um, so I probably shouldn't be uh, filming this right now because if you can tell by uh, the window, it's pretty late. It's 11.38.39 currently. Um, and I have a midterm tomorrow, which fingers crossed I do well on. Um, but I just got back from a movie which I went to go see with beautiful Sally Enfield Rubinowitz. Um, who I will tag in this video. Um, but I guess something that uh, struck me from the movie, which was uh, The Perks of Being a Wallflower, which was which I've now seen twice. Um, no shame. Uh, it's amazing. If it's playing anywhere near you, which I don't, I know it's playing obviously in New York. I don't know where else it is, but um, look it up. If it's not playing near you, come visit me and come see it with me because I'll definitely go see it, you know, another time or 20. Um, uh, definitely read the book, especially if you can't see the movie, but always read the book before you see the movie while you're watching the movie after you see the movie. Just read, um, says the English major. Oof. Um... But anyway, uh, one of the things that I find so inspiring about the story um, is that it tells some, it says something really important about um, our generation and really every generation. Um, it says something important about young people. Um, the story, if you haven't read it or seen the movie, as I've been so lucky to do both, um, it's about a young kid, he's actually only a freshman in high school, he's like 14 I guess, um, who has to deal with a lot of problems. And uh, I guess one of the things that really made me think about is the way that society minimalizes uh, what young people go through every single day. Um, something that's kind of been a, a, a cause that's close to my heart. Um, anybody who really knows me has probably heard me rant about it before, but um, it's just it's ridiculous to me that every single generation goes through such intense discrimination, um, you know, as, as a young person, and then grows up and goes on to suppress the next generation. It doesn't it doesn't make sense to me. I think it's wrong. I think it's disturbing, um, and I think it's really sad. I think we're missing out on a lot of beauty. Um, I I think it's ridiculous. <laughs> um, actually, uh, if if you know anything about mental disorders, which I can't claim to, I, I really don't. But I've talked to a couple of people who do um, in the medical profession, and a lot of people don't realize that um, as you know, a young person, normally uh, someone who's under eighteen, child, I guess. Though the term is kind of. Uh, got a lot of um, negativity attached to it, but um, doctors won't diagnose most of them with uh, mental disorders such as depression or bipolar because it's almost impossible to tell if they actually have that or if they're just teenagers. Um, almost every single young person goes through crippling depression, um, insane highs and lows where you feel like you're at the top of the world one moment and the next moment you can't even move because you're catatonic. Um, it's, it's disturbing to me that it's not something that's talked about more often. Um, I'm currently writing my first novel, which sounds <laughs> much more glamorous than it is, I promise. Um, but it's about a girl who is dealing with depression, um, dealing with the repercussions of other people's actions, um, and dealing with the suicide of someone who, uh, who she actually wasn't close to but wanted to be close to. Um, and my, my professor uh, for my young adult novel class was actually um, felt that I was writing about something that was not um, appropriate for a young adult audience. So young adults are killing themselves, but we can't talk about it. Um, needless to say, I'm including that in my novel, rather, whether or not she likes it. Um, because it's something that needs to be said and it's something that needs to be heard and if I have a voice, I'm going to use it. Um, but I think it's I think it's really disturbing that uh, everybody goes through this and it's, it's not something that we talk about. Um, luckily, we have art uh, 
and they're calling the Perks of Being the Wallflower the next Breakfast Club, which uh, of course sounds like heresy to everybody who's a huge Breakfast Club fan, including myself, but um, I mean, it kind of is, uh, because it deals with those issues without making them seem petty or like they won't matter in a couple of years, because they do matter and they continue to matter. And what matters is staying alive through all of this. Um, so actually, I wanted to read two poems in this video, which is already, you know, five and a half minutes long. Thank you if you're still with me. Um, and the first one is actually a poem I wrote when I was only 12 years old. Um, it's kind of one of my darker poems, probably that I've ever written. But I think it's important um, to read something from the beginning of my journey uh, when I was still very young and show that uh, even as someone who was, you know, 12 years old, I had really very real emotions and I was dealing with real stuff and uh, they don't, there, there's no particular age where you suddenly realize that the world around you is difficult and painful, it's just something that happens. Um, and I realized it when I was, you know, nine years old. Um, but here's a poem from, uh, I guess, my earlier writing stage um, to show you that uh, I've always had all of the elements inside of me that, you know, are coming out even more now that I'm allowed to feel this way and to express those emotions. Uh, so this is nothing. I am falling past walls so smooth, my death below and nothing to hold on to. I thought I saw a light, but now it's gone. Hurtling through nothingness is where I'll be found. Nothing is not anything. Nothing is what it will be. And when I look down to the bottom of my heart, nothing is what I see. For I am nothing, and nothing is me. So when you ask me why I am I, remember there is nothing more than what meets the eye. For I am nothing, and nothing is me. And I guess that's the way it's supposed to be. So um, that was that was nothing, which again I wrote when I was twelve. Obviously, it's not the most sophisticated writing, but um, I was there, and I was a sentient human being, and I knew what was going on, and it was hurtful and painful, and uh, no one should ever feel as I felt then, like I wasn't allowed to be feeling such intense emotions because I was too young. Um, everyone should be allowed to to express what they're feeling, regardless of their age. Um, so now, if I can find it, um, this is really, really, really rough, obviously, as I'm you know, going through this notebook, which I'm using for all of my classes in a very unorganized fashion. Oh, here it is. Um, it's another thing that I wrote for my performance and poetry class uh, with Lily Perdomo, who, as I've said a million times, is amazing. Um, and what we do at the beginning of the class is we watch a YouTube video of a performance poet and then we take one line from the poem and write as many things as we can right after that. And this is actually what I wrote in response to um, a poem which I will link to. It's fantastic. Um, it's actually performed at the White House, so <laughs> big shoes. Um, but obviously this is really rough because it's literally just the exercise that we did in class. Um, but I think it says something about what I'm feeling right now about being young. Um, so the line that I chose from the poem was, we be sound to beat, to base, to flesh. Um, and I don't have a title for this, obviously, but I'll just start reading. We chase the rhythm of something we can't understand. Somehow, the vibrations of quasars and supernovas, of black holes rock us to sleep and wake and breathe and always ever dream. We are something more than you see, something that runs deeper than the shapes our faces deconstruct into. We are the music in your bones. We are the sounds of tires screeching, cows mooing, the babies rocked by sleeping mothers. We are the chase, the fear, the reach. We are hands that haven't been told, that touch is just the interaction of molecules. We are the sound of Disney DVDs being run over by steamrollers whose purpose has never been to build but to tear down. We are the drip, drip of Chinese water torture, the flight of the ugly duckling. We are gorgeous in our unbeauty. We are grounding the lightning. We are whispering the thunder to our progeny. And for generations, they will remember the heavy mouth breathers of Generation Y. The generation called me, but that screams ours with every handful of soil because this is our legacy. 
the power of bass, and the way that everyone marches to a beat. And if we all listen to the same song, we all run from something towards something the same way. Infinity is just a symbol for what we are.